Welcome back to the Veil. Uh, this is a video about the pros and cons of the Veil. Um, but before we get into that, I would like to show you that the Campaign 2 also has traps. And there are, of course, the auras and if you play uh, through the campaign, you get these lovely reward cards. Uh, the reward cards are because the campaign is not uh, uh, are not part of the Tabletopia, so you cannot make copies of them just like I did. And there are allies, and allies there are. They look gorgeous, and let's see, these are the allies that you might, under certain circumstances, uh, <coughs> uh, get in your deck uh, and then you can play with them. It's totally unclear to me at this point, uh, so it's a mystery uh, how they play and when they play. Uh, but it is uh, very something to, 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 to look uh, forward into. Um, now, back to the pros and cons. Uh, the oh, first the negatives. Uh, the Veil is a set of two games uh, consisting of cards only. And uh, well, it's a deck builder, so no, but nobody knows exactly what a deck builder is. But I played Dominion and I was bored out of my mind. Uh, shuffling some cards with a hand of five uh, fingers is lame to me. Uh, deck builders are for autistic people that <laughs> prefer multiplayer or solitaire. I have no pure deck builders in my collection. Well, Dungeon Brawler perhaps, but that is a bad game as well. Valley of the Kings is also de de deconstruction. Dire Wild is also a map. Uh, Concordia is more action selection. Um, there are some others in my collection. Um, so, all have atmosphere and interaction. Um, but yeah, it's a deck builder, so the first seed of doubt is has been sown. sown. The second neg negative is, as a true deck builder, you're shuffling cards like a maniac, especially in, this, in the start of the game. Um, your deck is initially quite small, so uh, getting five. Uh, I hate shuffling and it distracts and diminishes immersion. Uh, there's a steep learning curve. Uh, I smash my head into the curve when trying to figure out on Tabletopia. It's not the way to learn a game. Well, your mi mileage may vary. Then the name. <coughs> As I already said, it's uh, so generic that no search on YouTube <laughs> finds any result. Uh, spelling mistakes I uh, didn't show you uh, yet, but there, um, well, there are coup de gras and some other uh, strange n titles of the cards. Um, well, uh, if you can step over that. Well, The Veil 2 is not even on BoardGameGeek, uh, pro probably actively suppressed by BoardGameGeek ge staff, because, well, <laughs> it's Christian. <laughs> and American-run uh, websites are so afraid of Christian repercussions, I guess. Um, well, The Veil 2 won... Uh, 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 initially failed uh, funding on Kickstarter and the Veil version 2 had boxes of packs but no way to decide which one to get uh, so now well, campaign 1 and campaign 2 rewards cards are not in Tabletopia so I ordered the allies and rewards pack and uh, paid for it and it's on my way and I'll show you when it gets here uh, the distinction between recruits and non-recruits has been mentioned, um, but seriously, I mean, they are clear. Uh, the game effects are 
are meat nor fish. It's originally uh, designed for PvP and the campaign was added to give context for the heroes and especially the villains. But the game affects that target opponent decks do absolutely nothing in PvE. So what you what you can do is something like uh, you have a card and it does something versus a player, but in campaign it doesn't do anything. Um, well, target player discards one card, card from their hand. That's nice to play against an opponent, but how does it work in campaign mode? Uh, that was perhaps a bit too fast, but there are similar such cards. Um, that's well, you play with uh, what you get. Uh, for solo PvP, there is no n real. There is a real need for uh, for AI-controlled opponents. Uh, otherwise, you are stuck with the campaign. And well, maybe in the next video we'll go deeper into that. For campaign, there is just too much choice. Uh, I, uh, there are 40 cards. And if you want all, uh, which one should you play first? And uh, if you play one at a time, uh, you will never get to learn uh, how a character really plays. And I'm, I'm sure it's nice to uh, to have this option of choice, but it's, a, it's an illusion because you won't get far. And it's also disheartening. Uh, so this is why I limited the choice to help myself. Uh, so I only start with paladin, sorceress, and a thief, uh, or a thief. So if the paladin dies, I can play sorceress. Then I can play the thief. And all the cards that get locked away for a dead paladin are from the uh, champions of faith. So the sorceress is not affected. Okay. The question, of course, is <coughs> the quest. The game is very expensive. If you want all, you pay 140 euros or dollars for the two boxes, and then 25 for the playmats. Uh, this is the El Chipo playmat, but it's not big enough. I mean, it uh, doesn't really fit. I can work with it, but it's well less than ideal. So, another 25 for a book, and if you want to, well, over $200. And is that worth it? Uh, my goal in life and games is $2 an hour. Uh, that means uh, 100 uh, hours of uh, play out of this. There are 50 chapters in both books. Uh, well, yeah, 25 plus 25 uh, now well each battle uh, uh, I, I'm not sure of course how long each one will take um, I have to play it <coughs> but the first ones were 20 to 40 minutes that means three complete run throughs of campaign on only game so well as luck ha would have it, I have three uh, unlocked heroes to start with. Um, so $200 for small boxes, badly designed, no dice, no minis. <laughs> Great! I've lost over half the American viewers by now. Uh, Playmat design is terrible. <coughs> How are you to keep track of your current health? I mean, I used the hearts. Uh, but it's not really natural because you cannot ever get over the starting health. So what you actually are looking for is the damage. So you want some kind of damage track and zero damage means full health. Um, your maximum health is on the card but no way to denote with counters. Uh, so tracker tokens, dice, wound tokens. Uh, unclear. So, if you are playing PvP with uh, two heroes with the same uh, amount of health, you are supposed to flip a coin. There is one uh, chapter where you have to roll a die. Uh, it's just 
not elegant. Um, okay, now all the rules. Uh, already uh, mentioned that I have to house rule uh, about half the time. They are very concise, not complete, and you need to apply PvP rules to the PvC situation. So, well, it and everything feels arbitrary. Uh, Shuffle and they open four fate cards. Why four? Um, well, sometimes six, but it doesn't feel natural uh, choice. And the cards in your hand, five or four in turn one for the starting player, may be played. Well, all of them, or some of them, well, somewhere deep in the Kickstarter comments, uh, the creator Logan wrote that you were supposed to play all your cards and not keep them. But why? Uh, now, advanced cards that you buy in your hand can be played immediately. Um, well, this pack. Let me take a pack. of faith for example of course uh, so sorry uh, the, the cards that you can buy in your uh, are placed in your hand this is not normal uh, deck builder convention normally uh, what you buy goes to your discard pile so it needs highlighting uh, especially the differences and um, well, a few paragraphs later it is written, quote, Whenever a card is purchased from your fate route, you immediately replace the empty slot with the top card from your fate deck and place the purchased card into your discard pile. So it <laughs> contradicts <laughs> what I just said. So once you get a once you pay for the cards, say um, Blessed uh, Covenant, where does it go to? So you need to house rule this. Uh, I play uh, conforming to the uh, the playthrough that was already published uh, by some other guy. Uh, that it is immediately in your hand, and it then after playing, it gets in your discard pile. Uh, then, uh, well, the terminology after you have utilized all your yada yada and draw four, five cards from your next turn, uh, that is the actual text. Um, Yeah, here. So, uh, separate from your fate deck, shuffle your starting deck and draw five cards. Player with lowest health goes first and begins the game. Uh, flip a coin. Um, then there are these icons. Uh, the icons don't feel natural. <coughs> Well, the health is okay, and the damage is okay. The gold coin, well, okay. But why is green called cornucopia? And why is blue lock and chains? And why is red a dragon? Uh, and here, draw five cards for your next turn. But that's not what you do. You draw up to five cards if you don't play all the cards. That is sloppy. Uh, what's more to whine about? Yeah, signal the opponent that your turn is done. Uh, that's literal uh, text, but when you draw up to five cards, this is the implicit signal that your turn is done, so it's n not necessary. And a mulligan. Uh, the mulligan. So you have these four cards. One, two, three, 
before and you decide you hate what you got. Uh, doesn't explain. Um, no. <sighs> Mulligan first. Uh, the, this game term pops up like every other game uh, since 2017. Um, literally it means it doesn't count. Uh, so game rules say mulligan a card from each of the four decks slots in the phase route, but they never explain how it is supposed to work. M mulligan can, can mean place back, uh, redraw, like redraw, Uh, and put the cards aside under your deck, or come on, uh, well, I guess it, it's just not clear. Um, if you s decide to mulligan, and well, it is implicit but not written out that you can f do this with any card or zero cards. And if you mulligan like so, I uh, decide that this one is uh, stupid, you put it under, shuffle, and then you draw it back a new card. But you then you have the chance to draw the card that you, that you mulligan again. So that makes a difference if you uh, exclude them or not. Uh, so I house rule that you exclude them first, then draw, and then put under. Uh, what is more to whine about? Yeah, well, the self-banishing thing. This card. Um, this is the self banishing icon. This means that you play the card and it gets banished, but there is no visible uh, reference or, or correspondence between the X and the banished. So and then banished doesn't really mean banished because you can draw cards by playing them <coughs> that <coughs> gets your banished card back. There are not, not, not many, but that is not really a banish. A banish means exile for a few years. Okay, that, that is, all, I think, all the criticism that anyone can have, uh, honestly, versus this game. However, <laughs> considering only the uh, campaign mode, you well, you need friends or AI for PvP. Not sure which is more work, <laughs> but all the points mentioned before are irrelevant because I like it. The combat is fluid and exciting, thought-provoking. Uh, you can identify with the situation. I mean, you really start to care for the priest, at least I do. Um, so it's very conducive to um, suspension of disbelief. Um, the story is well written. Uh, I mean, there are so many big stories, uh, story games uh, of late, uh, the Isofarian Guard and the Sworn and all these massive titles, and they all have narration, but nobody mentions uh, if it's any good. I mean, you, you, <laughs> there's a difference between you can write and you can write. This guy can write. I can assure you of that. Um, the story sucks you right in. Um, with some added stuff, um, well, for example, the campaign uh, um, slider that I made, um, it helps you to, to, to limit your, uh, your options first and then grow later on. Um, this uh, sense of growth and progress is, is fantastic, of course. Uh, your rewards uh, carry over, uh, so if you survive uh, with the uh, the hero priest, for example, or some other hero, uh, the deck gets better, and you can you get to reuse it in in the next chapter until you die, of course. But 
assuming that well the stakes get higher um, because of the campaign uh, card because the, the cards you get to replace with the pack so the pack gets uh, l less and less cards so the next wannabe hero um, say which one is the part of the priest uh, The priest, uh, champions of faith. So, for example, a cleric. Um, cleric is also uh, of champions of faith. Um, he will have um, the um, less cards to to choose from and to grow from. Um, so the stakes are getting higher and higher. The better you get. Um, of course, this is to 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 totally optional and it's not part of the original game. But um, well. <laughs> Combat uh, is smooth, fast, elegant, um, easy to keep track of. Uh, well, <laughs> nothing like Oathsworn or Isofarian. Uh, it doesn't take uh, three hours. Um, setup time and teardown time is under a minute. I mean, you place the the, the veil, the play mat. Pick the, uh, the 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 cards from the ziplock um, uh, of your hero, and you continue on. Um, this is also easy to shuffle and and uh, play out. So that is um, often not highlighted in games uh, that are geared toward miniatures and American uh, uh, consumers. But I prefer a game that I can set up quickly and easily and destroy quickly and easily I mean you pick up the cards ziplock pick up this card ziplock and that's it um, so that that is a, a, a gi giant pro um, then there is nothing like it I mean there are deck builders and there but this uses the deck building uh, in an innovative way well uh, I know about 100 more g board games and card games I've never seen some something even close like it um, the recruits self heal um, if they survive uh, I already mentioned that if you have uh, recruits Where is a recruit when you need one? Supports. Recruits. So, um, the recruit has a, a certain amount of hit points and then it revives if the um, dam damage is uh, uh, less. So, if uh, the enemy does 3 damage, the Sanctified regains its health. That's that's uh, that's brilliant. <laughs> uh, so well, the both cards are uh, going immediately into your hand, and that also uh, uh, makes the gameplay so much faster and more dynamic. There is no need for different status effects, no effect cal calculations, no distance, no line of sight, no damage over time, no uh, area of effect. You only need to, re to re only need to remember first is four cards, not five, uh, four cards here um, in your fate deck um, so what I seek in board games is story atmosphere to escape the dull reality of closed minded people that crowd the malls like zombies I have zero zombie games and I avoid them actively uh, this game takes all of my boxes in that respect it is not like a lot of destruction at the video game, but a bit like Diablo 2 and in the artwork and angels, demons, imps and other dark figures. It, it has two gameplay modes for the campaign at least, soft, softcore and hardcore. Well, <laughs> what more can you want? Uh, there 
well, the, the three colors represent the tech tree, more or less, and uh, that is the same with Diablo, also three tech trees per hero, and also different tech trees for different hero. Um, yeah, well, so I made some uh, small uh, optimizations, so I will make uh, ribbon, because I believe in ribbons. Um, to sort the decks uh, and sort the packs and grab them in uh, from the uh, from the box. I'll make a good box uh, that is easy to uh, to organize. Um, I don't like so much the commercially available box. It's more or less like the box I have. Um, <laughs> there's no way to to find out find what you what you need. Uh, but I'm I'm totally in love with this game. Uh, Logan did a fantastic job. Uh, if you think you have 200 hours in the next year, toy with idea at least. Um, do not make it uh, like uh, like I did. Um, well, I wish I could back the first campaign and catch the errors. Plus, the first campaign had PNP, so I'm kind of hoping that. The, this series of videos will not get forbidden uh, because of, uh, I don't know, copyright or something. Okay, uh, now then we arrive in Terra Incognita. Will gameplay be different with heroes from different packs? Will bosses play the same? Allies, how do allies work? Uh, will it be doable to, p to play two-handed uh, solo um, in the campaign? I mean, this was true solo, uh, and not even start scratch the surface, uh, but you can play two solos, much more combinations. Um, how can we make a pra simple practical AI for testing out PvP? I'm imagining that uh, if you have a simple villain with no uh, pack, uh, you have a quite a challenge if you just um, play the cards for the villain uh, uh, card by card. It should be easy to... to uh, to figure out. Uh, I like experimenting, so, well, uh, lots of things to answer, and stay tuned for the next episode. Bye-bye.